I have officially built the most imbalanced, the most ridiculous Plex server that I could possibly imagine. And I am so stoked to share it with you. And the fact of the matter remains that it is so powerful, I don't have enough possible devices to fully max out how much usage I can get out of it. As always, this video is part of a sponsored Plex tutorial slash video series here on the channel. Plex is a all-in-one media streaming server solution for all of your rips and downloads of your favorite media and your image backups. They can do a whole lot. I have a whole series on my channel. I do at least one video per month on the subject and you can use my affiliate links in the description below to sign up for free, buy the Plex Pass for yourself or gift one to somebody else if you wish to support the channel and let them know to keep supporting the channel and making some awesome videos. And as mentioned, I have made the most imbalanced Plex rig I possibly could back there. Back there we have the AMD Ryzen 3200G. That's an APU, four cores of just ridiculousness on a B450 motherboard, 16 gigs of RAM at 3600 megahertz, and a freaking Tesla V100 graphics card. That is a, if you were to buy a brand new about a $7,000 graphics card. It has 32 gigs of HBM2 memory <laughs> on it, a bajillion cores, and a ridiculous NVENC processor as it's designed to be used in the kind of virtualization scene, the VDI space, where you have you know, a bunch of different virtual machines running on it and they all need to be streamed via video encoding. And it's supposed to be able to do hundreds and hundreds of those, although that's at lower qualities and frame rates. And it doesn't even have a video output. So I have a whole previous video of the nightmare that I ran into trying to get the drivers to cooperate with other NVIDIA cards to get video output. And so I'm using the APU here, which is also kind of a limitation of the server. So I set up Plex Media Server on it, downloaded a couple Blu-ray rips, and what I was running into last time, it did not see seem like Plex was actually utilizing the hardware and coding on it because it wasn't showing a whole lot of usage and I was still getting some weird buffering and things like that. And that is because it was using the hardware accelerated encoding, but it was using such a low percentage of it that it was basically showing zero to 1%, but it wasn't using it for decoding. And so my buddy Jason over at Bite My Bits actually ran into a similar issue using a Quadro, I believe P4000 in his Plex Media server trying to get it to stream, is that for whatever reason, 4K HDR Blu-rays are not able to be decoded by some of these graphics cards for NVENC. And I looked up in the GPU support matrix and the only category that at least the V100 does not have the yes mark next to is 444 chroma sampling 10-bit in 4K, which is not a Blu-ray. A Blu-ray is only 420. However, the HDR and the something about the formatting is telling the decoder that it can't use the hardware decoding. So I was basically maxing out this poor little APU trying to decode the footage and that's what was slowing it down. Plus, there's a whole like Reddit thread talking about it that just got recommended to me. You really don't want to transcode 4K Blu-rays. I encountered this last year when I was making a video about using 4K Blu-rays is that if it transcodes it, it's not going to tone map it. So you're going to get a super washed out, ugly looking video in the first place. And it's just, it's not a good idea. You always want to rip the 1080p copy as well to then transcode or stream to other non 4K HDR devices. So I fed this bad boy a 1080p Blu-ray rip, Independence Day and started playing it on all the devices that I can. And I have only hit 40% usage of the NVENC engine on this Tesla V100. Now I am actually running into a bottleneck with this APU because like I said, it's only four threads. It can only do so much. And in order for me to like scale all the different possible players for me to play on this, uh, I needed to use like web browsers and stuff, which then requires the audio to be transcoded instead of, because for whatever reason, Chrome doesn't support all the native audio formats of certain rips. And so it has to convert the audio. And so from all the different streams that I've pulled up, I'm actually maxing out the CPU in terms of audio decode. So then I have to use the Plex Media Player app in order to play it and transcode the video, but still not transcode the audio. So I have currently 11 streams of video playing back simultaneously at different points in the movie at different quality settings with no issues. Now, I can't scale much further. Like I said, I literally ran out of devices that I could run the, the native Plex app on, but holy balls. I've got two web browsers plus the native app on my main desktop. I've got the app on my, uh, on my gaming desktop. I've got my phone running it. I've got uh, two laptops running it. I've got my TV running it. I've got one on my streaming capture computer here, as well as the Plex media server itself. And I have a desktop upstairs running it. And I'm only at 40% usage for Envink, and that's for decode and encode together. So theoretically, if we're doing the math here, we could get something like 25 total streams or more 
out of this server, out of, off of this graphics card of Invink transcoding, which is just bonkers. Now, of course, for most people, even with that much, like that's not worth a $7,000 graphics card, although you can get them for about 3,000. The, 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 it doesn't make sense for a Plex server for anybody. But I kind of wanted to do this to parody all the people who were buying super high-end quadros for their Plex media servers to get these extra Plex streams because I just found it kind of ridiculous. I was like, I have a family of like two people in my house. Even if I shared it with my like parents, my, my family who lives separately, that's three more people. And so I'd need like three transcode streams. But at no point do I need like 50 transcode streams. Like that's an entire school or an office building or something. But then recently an article from The Verge was recommended to me in which it was talking about there's this whole ecosystem of people who share and invite each other to these different Plex media libraries and it's considered like a very good thing to get access to a Plex library that has like all the movies available because you know that kind of replaces your paid streaming platforms and piracy for a lot of people and I can't really endorse this or anything but to see that that's a common enough situation that people are investing serious money into this instead of paying for streaming services I wanted to kind of do my own like ridiculous over-the-top parody of it because holy balls can you get some insane performance if you're willing to pay for it I will say there are alternatives and I will make a totally separate video about this if desired but you can actually for especially when you consider the cost investment of some of these graphics cards the quadro p4000 the tesla v100 it seems to me you would get the most value for your money out of just investing in more storage because with more storage you can actually use plex to automatically generate files at different streaming levels so at different like basically what it would do in real-time transcoding levels to then have those files available so it doesn't have to transcode them on the fly for streaming so if i wanted for example to invite my parents to stream from my Plex server instead of, since it's only running on a Synology NAS, instead of having to switch computers and have it transcoded and stuff, I can just render out those files, put it on there, and then when they play it back in a different quality, it's only streaming that file and they don't have to encode anything. And you can also sync it to specific devices and download it there instead of transcoding it on the fly. I don't know, there's a lot of different options instead of just real-time transcoding. And so I find this whole scene and process very bizarre but I wanted to show you what some real horsepower can do. And like I said, I understand why Jason at Bite My Bits now has like 12 tablets so he can test all of this. And I need like an army, just like a framed wall of tablets that I can control myself just to test all of this. But I got as far as I could before I ran out of CPU power for audio and literal devices to run the player on. But I wanted to share this with you as it, I thought it would be a quick, easy like project video and it turned into a couple weeks of ordeal to get it working. But. Hope you enjoyed this video. Go check out Plex if you haven't already. Go check out my tutorial series on it linked in the playlist link in the video description down below. Subscribe for more tech education. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Go check us out on Floatplane where you can get early access to videos and behind the scenes content, things like that. I'm Vox. I'll see you next time.